Yeah, I make games, and I'm your host, Mrs. with co-hosts Brogan Hackett and Adam Pipe, and this week we're joined by Salman Shuri. So, Salman, Hi. what do you do? I make, game. I make games too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what, what do you also, or what do you actually do? Uh, games. <laughs> <laughs> or full intro, I mean. It does sound snarky oh, if I that say what do you actually say. do. <laughs> what, are we, what are you working on right now? Oh, uh, uh, I'm working on um, a game where uh, you have no ammo and have to scare the bejesus out of enemies that have bullets. That sounds fun. <laughs> yes. I like that idea. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Broken, you want to go first? Questions? Yeah, yeah. So uh, my first question is uh, kind of uh, topical to stuff that I know Salman has worked on and stuff that I've worked on. Um, and it's, uh, do you think that indie game collections, like we've seen rise in popularity, such as uh, 10MG, Dreadx uh, collection, and even the haunted PS1 demo disc, do you think those are a good way to, like, going forward, a viable way to monetize shorter games? Honestly, I think the the biggest thing that... <laughs> exposure is usually the hardest thing to get when it comes to uh, getting your game out there, much less even getting people to buy the game. And I, th I think it, instead of, like, just having one person just shouting about the one game, it's kind of, the collections kind of help boost up the uh, other games as well. Like, I don't think I would have made as much as I would have through 10MG if I'd released my game just on my own. Mm. And I don't know if other people feel like the same way, but some if other people shine, you know, everyone else sh uh, like gets carried with that other game. I, I don't know how to best explain it, but do you think do you have similar thoughts to that? Yeah, that's definitely like how I've seen it with... Uh... Because I was part of uh, one Dread X collection, and I was, uh, I was, um, I obviously organized the Haunted PS One demo disc, which I was actually talking to some people today about, like how that uh, gave so much more views and downloads to to demos for games that would have gotten like less than a tenth of that attention otherwise. Um, so yeah, I think I think definitely it like benefits in terms of. Uh, the amount of like hype you can build around it because you have such a big audience, and also it's like um, the audiences of diff different people are kind of getting merged together as well. So you're getting like all the eyes for the people that are working um, on your collection as well. So that's cool. Yeah, that idea ended up getting reinforced in my mind uh, a while back when I well, I think maybe it's recent. If you six months back. I released a mobile game and it, uh, and it was basically a dud on release until I suddenly got a featuring uh, from a random featuring from Apple, and mm. yeah, uh, comp and uh, that dead silence kind of made that like stand out. Like I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Basically, the silence was very loud in terms <laughs> of downloads and. Uh, money coming in like it was basically nothing still mm. basically nothing but still better than nothing now mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so how did how did um how did you feel that like 10 mg because uh, you you made a game for 10 mg right um yep. like how, how do you feel like compared to what you usually like release like how much more that kind of exposed for you or, um um, actually, it was quite fun, like, uh, watching people, uh, play through the games, because I haven't, uh, since I, I don't, uh, see much of my games, uh, mm. live streamed or, what was it, um, what's the word, live streamed or, Let's like, someone or... making a YouTube video yeah. of my work, mm. and, uh, just seeing people reacting ended up, like, um, making me feel, like, uh, much optimistic, more optimistic about my, about my, my own work, yeah. um, 
Yeah, I kind of yeah. lost my train of thought, but it's yeah. um, it, it's been quite nice actually. Uh, so it's made my uh, pessimism in terms of uh, uh, making my games like turning more positive. I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm in the air standing near next to a cliff every time I definitely... working on a game. <laughs> yeah. I definitely saw that when I was making uh, Bubbo for the Dreadx collection, and there was a big focus on uh, getting streamers to play the games. And uh, when I when I visited a few of the streamers, they were trying to find the secret I put in in like the last day of development. That I was like, why did I bother spending time on this and not making like the menus more polished or something? But then that was like an extra like half an hour to an hour of like really interesting. Uh, stuff for them to try and do mm-hmm. and for them to explore um, and it like ma- got people to make like guides on Steam and stuff which uh, from what I understand like the more community interaction you have the better it is for a game um, and so like that that's a, that uh, really reinforced that that one bit of effort was actually really worth it on that game and it, it uh, made me feel less bad about putting time into it Mm-hmm. Uh, I, there was one thing the the, the similar thing uh, that I had with my 10MG game where I had like a I, I would go, whenever someone was streaming I'd tell them not to click on one of the, a random door and <laughs> every time that they did it like a voice would start talking like someone would be shouting get out or some other random sound and it would scare the hell out of them <laughs> whoops, whoops. <laughs> my phone just went off there uh, yeah and um, seeing them like uh, get jump scared from an audio track uh, <laughs> made for some good laughs. <laughs> after yeah, after like uh, trying to get them to click on something. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should do a bundle. I never get people playing my games. I like I saw that Adam's um, itch, and I like every game he put out has like hundreds of comments with people linking to their videos, and like the thumbnail is always like them making some weird face or something, and it's like scariest game ever. And I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's kind of it's not always, and it's a it's like it hurts extra much when like it's I don't know I feel like when I do like a horror game, it's usually people like jump on it, but then it's like oh, I want to do something really weird, and then you make something really weird, and all of a sudden like. 10 people play it, and then it's like, oh god, is this game just bad, or are people not interested, you know? Uh, <laughs> dang. Yeah, there's definitely, like, coming from, because I didn't make horror games for a long time, because I kind of, I didn't like horror games for a long time, and then I played, like, at last, I think, and I got really into it, and I was like, I want to make a horror game now. And the first horror game I made, like, had much more of an audience than any game I'd made up until that mm. point, and mm. it kind of opened my eyes as to how appealing different genres are. For indie developers. Mm-hmm. By the yeah. way, my 10MG game was my first horror game that I ever made. And I want to make like something way more. Uh, I think uh, I, I still think about this review that so I think uh, someone at Rock Paper Shotgun said that uh, saying that the game uh, scared the living daylights out of them. Like uh, <laughs> just based on just the sound alone. <laughs> and uh, that, yeah. <laughs> they said they would never, they never wanted to play it again. Just because of that. That's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. It's always nice that like horror games to get like they do have like that reaction on people. But it's it's weird, right? Because I feel like when I make when when I make my own game I don't see how it's scary or like yeah. I wanna make it more scary. <laughs> like I'm I'm finished with the game yeah. and I'm like, Oh I should have put in a jump scare, this isn't scary at all. But then like other people are like I couldn't move, it was too scary. But it's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then when you actually do put a jump scare, it's like, oh, that jump scare was lame, and it wasn't actually scary. It's really weird. Uh, Adam, you reminded me of something funny that I did uh, a while back when I was in university. Uh, we were testing out uh, VR, what was it those uh, Google Cardboard kind of things, mm. and I I got I made a random Unity project, picked some assets with I had um, uh, a gorilla, and uh, one was a uh, like a uh, a dinosaur uh, T-Rex yeah and I had as soon as you put on like the Google Cardboard you'd see a, mo- uh, a monkey in front of you right mm. and uh, and uh, while people were uh, you know using it I would tell them to look up 
and they would see like a massive T Rex just staring <laughs> down at them, and uh, and that ma- <laughs> that brought so many laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> And also scared the, shit, the living daylights out of people as well. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, uh, that's clever. I like that using like framing just to like give gameplay and and I don't know cinematic experience. <laughs> Put jokes just in like which direction you're <laughs> facing the potential of VR. <clears throat> yeah, I haven't I haven't really gotten into horror. I feel like I should just because of the response it gets but the last time i did horror i ended up just making a clone of adam's game without realizing it <laughs> <laughs> i remember that all right <laughs> <laughs> i was like wait you did this exactly <laughs> yeah it was really funny seeing that on my timeline <laughs> and i was like wait I made this. What, what's going on <laughs> um the last maybe, maybe we should uh say what games those two are just for the sake oh. of people listening <laughs> Oh yeah, it's um, Tonsil Tale, which is like a game where you need to, it's like you're inside someone's mouth and you need to scream to like open their mouth and then you can see. And um, I think what Miz did is pretty much exactly the same, yeah. except without a mouth or something, yeah. Yeah, it was just an asset flip of like stuff I got off open game art. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention, Salman's uh, horror game is called Sealed the State for 10MG. Um, I really yeah. like the trailer for that game. Yeah, um, which is a weird thing to say, but it's like it's. Uh, I already get like the, the horror vibe from it, despite like the game not even. It doesn't look like a horror game on the surface, you know. Um, but yeah. By it's, the way, uh, that my, my the trailer that I made for it was a ac- complete accident. Yeah, I couldn't get recordings done properly, so I, I asked one person to play the game. Then they, for, uh, for some reason, the sound was cut out. <laughs> and uh, then I had to use, like, the broken footage, uh, pick, like, the sound out of it a little bit, <laughs> and then somehow, uh, and uh, just took out, like, one second snippets, and also, uh, and somehow it sounded, it, the sound worked, <laughs> oh, and man. it looked good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I tried to put text in, because I, uh, uh, I didn't have enough good footage. And I didn't want to reveal everything. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, somehow the trailer ended up uh, looking good. Mm. I don't know how I got away with it. <laughs> That's pretty powerful, to be honest. <laughs> how did you do the text intro on it? Was that like... Uh, um, I, is that in Construct? I I used... Yeah, it's all in Construct. Okay. Uh, I, be, I basically took an, uh, an old project where I was messing around with... Uh, trying to do some kind of uh, 2D lighting. It didn't go far, but uh, I ended up adding uh, making a bunch of puzzles where they, and uh, these boxes would move closer to the character or further away. Uh, I, it was a bunch of like um, interactive stuff uh, that I ended up getting cut out of the game, mm-hmm. but I kind of wish I p- uh, put them back in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I, I took them out just to be able to focus on the narrative a bit more. Like, uh, yeah. and also um, I used a lot of text just so I don't I didn't have to make more art assets like <laughs> the text was only there just so I didn't have to make any more art assets like that was the whole goal <laughs> and uh, and uh, one problem that came out of that was that the screenshots uh, ended up looking boring and then like two three days before release I ended up adding like a bunch of these interactive bits uh, just to make uh, more interesting screenshots. Uh, oh, that's uh, so there was like the the wheel mini game that you start off with. Where you, uh, what was it? as soon as you start the game, you ha- you see a hand show up and it follows your cursor. I end up like um, and then you crash. What was it? If you pick up the wheel, and uh, that ended up making. In, it ended up doing. I posted it on Twitter just to see what what kind of reaction it would get. And I ended up making like more interactive kind of stuff. And uh, I think one of the reviews pointed it out that it felt like a mishmash of different genres. Uh, like <laughs> I was doing it on purpose. Like it was like some very clever thing mixing <laughs> like, uh, and I was just laughing at that. Just, I wish I could tell it to their yeah, face but... that it was just to make more interesting screenshots. <laughs> so that was just like last minute panic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, 
yeah, the whole f- uh, it all stemmed from the fear, like, uh, oh, if this, if I don't get any more um, like anything in, interesting visuals for a screenshot or a trailer, oh, this game's gonna bomb, and uh, that fear ended up like pushing me to add that kind of stuff. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I most of the time, because I, I always start with like the art in my games. It's like usually I just do the art and then I put it on Twitter and if nobody likes it I just stop making the game. <laughs> 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 you know, people will only play it if it looks good, you know. Uh, yeah. A B just... testing through Twitter. <laughs> A B testing through Twitter. That's what Twitter is for, right? Oh yeah. Mm. I've mm. dropped a bunch of prototypes uh, because of that. And I've I, every few months I get like uh, someone DMing me saying, Hey, what happened to this game? Please make it. <laughs> and I've had like I've I, uh, I've given so much blue balls to people that are <laughs> that oh my, that yeah. I had people offering to pay money just so they can take <laughs> that game and make uh, a version of it for themselves. Like someone offered me a hundred bucks. Oh wow! And, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I remember the the first time um, I spoke to you. I was like, I recognized your tweet, and I was like, "Oh my god, you're working on this game!" And then the first thing you said to me is like, um, "I hope you you won't hate me for this, but I'm not working on this." <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should probably move on to the next question now. I think. All right. Um, let's see. How do you find the difference between two D and three D? Uh, so I feel like. Did you just switch from 2D to 3D, or have you been working in 3D for a while? So I haven't seen you tweet about uh, it before until recently. Um, well, uh, I've done bits. Uh, I've done some 3D, but not in like it's all basically 2D, just 3D and visuals and very basic like uh, boxes and spheres, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I haven't done like anything big. I think my first proper exposure to making anything close to 3D was uh, when I was working on uh, some hyper-casual games on mobile. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, it's pretty easy to uh, fake like big production value on uh, hyper-casual games by just having a square that glows a bit more than <laughs> usual. Uh, <laughs> and some other stuff, a cubes, well, a cylinder that doesn't look like a cylinder. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I feel like 3D is, is like you can just do more post processing, so that's why. I do oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is so I, I I'm in love with post processing. <laughs> oh my god! Turn Bloom to the max. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw the screenshot of the game you were working on, and it's it just once you added the post processing, it's like, oh, this is good. This is great. Yeah, yeah Chef's Kiss. I play no, this. Too. Chef's Kiss, exactly. <laughs> 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 Wait, which one has yeah, but... post processing on it? I'm looking at. Um, I think it's the secret one. I don't know. I don't know if I should have mentioned it. So. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, never Uh-oh. mind. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh... all good. But um, but Sal, you because you made something in 3D and then you went back to 2D. Um, it's kind of like interesting to me. Like, why did you go back to 2D? It was just like you know. Weren't you like not comfortable in 3D, or which is like, oh, I have more ideas in uh, 2D games? Or... To be honest, I've always wanted to make a 3D game, but mm. I was always held back by, oh, I'm gonna go broke if this becomes like a, if I don't like make it succeed quickly enough. Mm. And that fear has made me like stay in 3D a bit longer. <laughs> I mean, 2D, 2D, 2D. yeah. Mm. And uh, that fear like kind of went away when i recently got that award from uh, at the game developers of color uh, expo mm. uh, i i did it like a i did a talk expecting nothing in return uh, <laughs> I, I did a talk about uh, how to come up with a game come up with games that you haven't thought of of or yeah. haven't been made yet and yeah. uh, I saw that talk it was great oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> uh, um the, well, yeah, that talk made me think about a lot of things, and uh, when it comes to making games, but uh, it didn't. I didn't have like um. I was always stuck just doing two D, so I couldn't mm-hmm. go do more with that. And just at the end of the conference, suddenly hearing uh, my name being called, and <laughs> for some award, saying, "Oh, uh, like I, I see like five other people suddenly get an award uh, 
and mentoring from No More Robots, uh, mm. like winning something. And I was like just sitting there thinking, oh, good for them. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not <laughs> expecting anything. And then they suddenly go, and last but not least. And then they say my name <laughs> out and then give me like a small eulogy, like as if... Uh, uh, I died or something, but you know, as in good. <laughs> they give you like yeah. a big check. Uh, I wish. But but that made uh, but uh, the award ended up giving me a chance to be uh, giving me like a a, a a contract of sorts with a uh, humble, hmm. and um, after like getting a few pitches rejected and uh, one getting re- uh, accepted. Uh, I f- it gave me the courage to actually get like um, get into trying to make a 3D game, and mm-hmm. uh, it has been um, it's been uh, it's like a, I feel like I just gained my wings again mm. when it That's comes great. to yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah It's also cool that you you got the space to like um, experiment as well because mm. um, yeah I'm kind of in the same boat I don't know I feel like I need some kind of external force pushing me to try you know learning something new um mm-hmm. i don't know yeah, so it's hard yeah yeah i'm happy that now i have the ability to <laughs> make a character look like they're shaking their ass while doing the anime uh, walk animation <laughs> with some procedural rigging so that's the yeah. end goal hell yeah yep. hell yeah <laughs> what is your 3d game gonna be about by the way is it the same thing and just is your 2D one or is it uniform? Yeah, the same as a 2D one where uh, you're a person with an empty gun okay. and um, everyone thinks that you're like this amazing uh, ma- killer assassination or... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Assass- yeah. Look, I haven't thought about the how to explain it properly, but <laughs> the whole... To put it simply, you're basically scaring people with an empty gun acting like yeah, it's full. And you're just trying to get it's a like a split between a puzzle game and an action game of sorts. It's like a Mexican standoff simulator. Yeah, <laughs> except awesome. you, except you can shout uh, at enemies uh, as well to make them like back good. off a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. That's so cool. I'll, yeah, it was originally like a, a Ludum Dare project, uh, but then I overestimated. Uh, no, I underestimated how much uh, trying to make the AI work like in a fun way would take. And uh, that game ended up like being stuck as a prototype for a mm. few months until I picked mm. it up and then pitched it. And it somehow sounded even better than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you, how do you make that challenging though? I mean, how do you like gamify that, I guess that idea or make puzzles um, or whatever? I think it's it's mostly about uh, trying to cover space. Like the longer you hold on on someone, uh, like stares you down, the the more so the more suspicious that they get, and more braver in attacking mm. you back. And mm. uh, the solution I came up with, like trying to make that obvious to the player, was having like this uh, this line uh, field of view kind of line show up under the floor of the character, and it just gets smaller and smaller. As um, was it as they become less suspicious in a way, and um, yeah, it seemed to work better than I expected. Hmm. Like I, I, I let the uh, I like I had the basic premise, which was just like, oh, you aim at an enemy, uh, with your gun, and they, um, so, and I, uh, I let the game basically, what's the word, describe to me what it should be. Like, mm-hmm. uh, right. I, yeah, it's just going. Um, <laughs> it's ba- I basically let the game speak to me. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the game mechanics cool. come out. Yeah. yeah, explorative game design. I guess mm-hmm. sometimes that uh, method can become uh, very like it can slow down the project, of, uh, but it could also like make this. But it can also make magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Uh, um, I guess I should move on to my question. Or, um, uh, I was, was going to talk a bit about 2D and 3D. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, we, sure, yeah. We kind of just got uh, Salmon, Salmon's uh, thoughts on that. And, uh, oh, I'd, yeah, I'd like sure. I'd like to talk about it a bit, because I switched between 2D and 3D a lot during, like, making games. Um, mm-hmm. And, like, I actually started out with 3D, which I think is kind of uncommon. 
Um, but because at the time I was like messing about in Unity and Unity had like the character controller, I could just like drop that in and experiment with like making models and designing levels and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. and I wrote like 10 lines of code for my first game I ever made, but it was, a uh, it was a really good introduction to Unity and, uh, like that was cool. Um, and then I think after that, I switched to 2D for like a year, uh, before coming back to to like basing 3D. Um, hmm. It's interesting but, that you started with 3D. I feel that's maybe like unusual. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what I was thinking. Um, I mean, like, I, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> Unity first, 3D, and then 2D. Oh, right. the, the thing I find about 2D is that you feel more free to do something goofy, whereas in 3D you feel like you have to do something more serious, if that makes sense. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Because there's all these casual and, like, uh, funny physics games in 2D. And in 3D, it's much more, like, shooters and narrative first-person, like, walking simulators. Or, you know, it's... Mm-hmm. it's There's this uh, expectation of what a 2D game and a 3D game is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I see... I, I feel often like that's, like, a thing of limitations. Of what limitations you get when you move into 3D. Versus when you're working in 2D. Because in 2D you can just like throw something in there quickly. Um, and in 3D you kind of have to think about systems and how long it's going to take you to implement them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, too. I think it's probably also something... I think it also has to do with like um, the fact that there are like shadows in 3D. And it's hard to make something look cute if it has a shadow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's probably Good the point. flat color style is getting popular with a lot of indie games. The unshaded yeah, flat so. color. That is usually like the way they do like like the inlet stuff. Like what Sock Pop does is like the best way I think to do mm, cute stuff. Yeah, yeah. In free yeah. For sure. Well, their games are all like pseudo three D. They're technically they're they're written uh, with like game makers. Well, I think it was game maker. Oh no, it's, it's used one of one of them 3D. uses game maker, but um, yeah. I think well, I'm. I mean, a, a lot of. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, but w- what I meant is a lot of their games are uh, are 2D because I was, I was like talking to, that, to them before and, and they were like, yeah, this is all pseudo 3D. And I was like, I can't even make normal 3D look that good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm really excited for um, Bone Bands though, um, which is definitely like full 3D. But uh, I, I don't know if you guys know... Um, it's like the the big game they're working on. Like yeah, yeah. People, yeah. Um, By the way, I'm again, jealous. It's like a walking simulator. <laughs> so <laughs> typical yeah. 3D games. Mm. Uh, but I just wanted to say I'm jealous of Sock Pop because uh, they mm. met each other, I think, through university. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, they I'm all je- dropped out together or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what I, I know, don't... Yeah. oh, I thought they graduated I together. Yeah, I think some of them graduated. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think but, uh... Some graduated, some dropped out. I'm not sure, actually. But the reason yeah. I'm jealous... Should I explain why I'm jealous of them? No, go ahead. All right. It's because they met people that were actually passionate about trying to make games rather than playing games. Mm. Like, that's yeah. the problem that I had like in university. I and, really like... lost a passion trying to make a game yeah I had had the same thing where there was like a bunch of people who said they wanted to make games but they never tried to make games if that makes sense and like that's that's not a like judgment on them it's hard to make games and dedicated that time to it is difficult but it's really cool that they found like within such a localized area they found so many people Mm -hmm. in that like they're they're all pretty close in age that wanted to make games and we're actually making games yeah. For sure, um yeah. like I, I visited them and they're all really lovely people and uh it's just like amazing to me that they managed to find that many people in like one place oh they got a verge article about them patreon boy. game development <laughs> boy band. game development boy band, <laughs> boy band yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it is really cool um I'm just jealous because they can just like make games and stuff, like small games. <laughs> <laughs> making games with friends. That's what? a full-time thing, that's great. What's that like, making games oh. with friends? I can't imagine. Yeah, mm. it's the dream. God, <laughs> imagine that. Imagine people around you. <laughs> people who specialize in things and you can just be like, hey, can you make art? Yeah, 
I love making art. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's did we all um, like who here? Did we all like go to game schools? Because um, Bogan, you also mentioned um, like people around you, like that experience of not like, like finding people, only finding people that want to play games but don't like make them. Um, yeah, I st- I studied uh, software development in college, mm. so it was close enough that there were people there with like the skills to try if they wanted, but mm. uh, mostly didn't. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I had the same yeah, experience. I, I, I studied yeah. computer science, and then there was like people who wanted to, and they started a club, and I went to like a few meetings, and like it wasn't really going anywhere, so I just stopped going. <laughs> I kind of wish I had like started my own club and just being like, okay, guys, here's how you make games. We're going to make a game in one week. Okay, everyone, shut up. I don't care what you want to do. You're going to make a small game first, and then we're going to make three more, and then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. God, I, I remember like when, when I was um, on my like exchange program, um, I was also having like heated discussions with people. About like no 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 make make a game in a week and then they're like no 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 I've got, I've got this business idea man it's oh, four no. year plan it's a four year plan it's gonna work out it's, <laughs> it's gonna make my dream game it's World of Warcraft game. meets Facebook <laughs> <laughs> it'll make billions what well, how can you just my opinion is that, that uh like that? <laughs> what. My opinion is that dream games are the main thing in the way of getting in the way of people making games. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like people, people holding this idea of a dream game in, in their head when they could just be making like ten games that are nowhere near their dream game but are still cool as hell. Yeah. Hmm. I'm I'm feeling very blessed that I forgot what my dream game was. I'm sure I had it. But I forgot the idea. <laughs> I made like a two-page like drawing for, like eight years ago of a dream game that I wanted to make, like a co-op stealth game, mm-hmm. and uh, I've had it saved to my Google Photos uh, ever since. I lost the book that I drew everything in. Mm. I think I had like um the char- it was like some kind of RPG, and I had like a um, like the character would like get uh, stronger. By like uh, by lifting up small weights, huh. and they would like, and they would have like I think one, uh, and then I had one drawing where the character like a stick man was throwing money at uh, a mirror, and uh, and I think I wrote under it uh, raise the charisma stat, or something like that. <laughs> uh, I still want to make that, but I feel like every game that I've worked on has been slowly like trying to build up to that game, mm-hmm. but uh, and uh, you should just make the game in like a day to disrespect your eight years ago itself yeah i, I actually kind of tried it to be uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie it was like a it was a game i made like a little platformer stealth hotline miami kind of mix kind of a, a game uh, hmm. that i've been calling project goblins hmm. uh, for a while and um that game's actually it was ended up, ended up working out better than i thought but the problem is that uh, it's hard to make content for that game. Hmm. Um, yeah, I kind of lost the train of thought where I was going with that. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm still trying to make that game. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, currently it's in 2D and I want to make it in 3D and uh, over scope even more and end up, you know, uh, <laughs> getting very mad and eventually th- uh, destroying whatever computer I have left. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I never make my dream game because I feel like at my dream game, it's like, okay, I'll make it as soon as I'm done with my current game. And then I finish my current game and start working on it. And I come up with another idea for a, for, for my new dream game. So I'm working on my old dream game, <laughs> but I, it's not my dream game anymore. And so <laughs> it's always like chasing the... But it's... Yeah, I never reach it because there's always something new. Yeah. Multiple project paralysis. Yeah. That's what I call it. <laughs> I think I've got I'm currently working on three different projects at the same time. Oh so I'm suffering from it very much right now. Oh my god. How do you do three of them? <laughs> yeah. How do you yeah. deal three with games on, on three games at the same time? Um I try, I just prioritize which one's gonna get me money sooner. <laughs> and if the and the one that isn't gets worked like uh, worked on like one random day in the week. 
Mm. Yeah. And the other one, I just work on it, yeah. Oh, I guess I should talk about how I find the difference between 2D and 3D. I forgot that was the original question. (laughs) You got sidetracked? (laughs) Um, Oh, yeah. I just think 2D, it's a lot easier to do a lot of mathematical, like, procedural stuff and, like, generate things and do procedural animations because it's so much easier to do math in 2D. In 3D, you got to start working with dot products and cross products and vector math, and it's just, like, oh, it's such a pain. Whereas in 2D, you just, like, rotation. That's just on one axis, and it's, like, oh, it's so easy. Mm -hmm so easy to make mm. prototypes and like do art i feel like comparatively though there are some advantages with 3d if you're doing like especially with like the flat color style it's easy to make simple things that look good and you can rotate them around and animate them easier but 2d mm. is definitely like the the easiest way to prototype stuff i think um, 3d is like a cheat when it comes to trying to make a world <laughs> look bigger than it is yeah. yeah like you could put lots of trees around this uh, like a a random terrain and someone will think that it, you're know, like it's hiding the the most interesting thing like the imagination goes wild but mm. put it in 2d yeah like old zelda like uh, perspective mm. and suddenly it's boring yeah yeah you can <laughs> already see everything so you know what everything yeah. is yeah yeah yeah, it's it's great that in three D you can literally put like a picture of a building in the in the distance <laughs> and it'll look like it's actually there, you know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Adam, you have any thoughts on two D versus three D? Two D, three D. Um, um I, I actually when I started out, um I only made two D games because I didn't know how to do three D games. And, I, and then I swore to myself I would never make a 3D game because they're disgusting and boring. <laughs> and 2D is the higher art form. And then, <laughs> and then I went to school uh, for games, and then uh, we were forced to do 3D games, which I at the time thought <laughs> was ludicrous, and I hated them for it. But then I made a 3D game, and I liked it a lot. And I basically have made like two or three 2D games since, and mostly been doing 3D stuff. So. Um, <laughs> but I think it's like with um, I feel like I'm better at doing games that take less work in 3D, you know, because like you said, it's really difficult to do like dot products and whatever in 3D. Yeah. So you just stick to doing like walking simulators and stuff. And honestly, I'm just fine with doing that, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which is kind of great because I feel like if I do a 2D game, I have to like add mechanics and stuff. And maybe I don't, you know, I actually want to spend time doing that, you know. Um, it's kind of my take on it. Hmm. Oh, by the have... way, I love all your 3D work. Oh my God. <laughs> you, you always <laughs> land it with the aesthetics. Like you pick something random, like, I don't know, <laughs> casino theme, and suddenly you have like uh, casino slot machines with eyes that are jumping around. <laughs> and it looks freaking amazing. And then the next minute you have like a bunch of teeth on the camera that you shout into the mic and suddenly look, oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. It, yeah, <laughs> um, it, it's definitely, I don't know, I feel like a lot of times, um, especially with 3D, I'm just starting with like an aesthetic and it's more like being excited to try out the aesthetic and then um, the, the game, I can do like the game after. And once you have the aesthetic down, it's like really cool. So. I'm glad you like my aesthetics. <laughs> uh, let's see. We, uh, oh, yeah, we forgot to have Salman ask one of his questions in between. So you want to go with the question next? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Um, okay, so I don't think... Uh, I'm guessing some of you guys have worked in like a couple team projects. Uh, mm. Like, What's yeah. like the biggest warning sign? that makes you like not want like want to stay away from a a person when it comes to a project like what's the biggest warning sign for you they haven't made a game before (laughs) for me it's when they're they're really like when they come really prepared you know they're they're like doing like a big game design documents and they're like like, they're really like we're gonna make this game this is a projected timeline and stuff that usually spells disaster because it means they're not like flexible at all Mm -hmm. you know um right yeah 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 i think yeah the flexibility is like the biggest uh warning sign for me as well Mm. like if they're very stubborn about one thing 
like it usually spells like uh, danger for the rest of the project because uh, some it could be something random like uh, I'll pick an example when I did like global game jam like go game jam uh, seventeen two thousand seventeen and um, I had no two thousand sixteen oh well forget it it was global game jam yeah right yeah and um, <laughs> I had one teammate who. Um, who argued over like the perspective of of, of a tornado animation, <laughs> and uh, I was the artist, he was the programmer, and there were other teammates and they were trying to scramble for things to do. Um, mm. We had Michael Serra for uh, like the texture for every single thing in the game <laughs> at the time, and um, like look a straight picture of Michael Serra. <laughs> Like, he was the floor, he was the character, like, just smiling at you. And, um, wait, I don't know, grinning. And uh, we were arguing about, me and this uh, programmer were just arguing over the tornado should be this perspective, because the, all the rest of the, uh, well, my argument was it has to be the same perspective as all the other um, all the other art. And he was like, no, it has to be up, it has to look top down, blah, 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 tornado. And uh, it was very pointless argument, mm. uh, mm. but uh, but uh, I didn't want. But uh, I was so adamant about it, uh, like it would just be a waste of time, that I wasted time, and uh, we basically argued for two hours. Mm. But I still made the asset uh, in between, and he still argued about it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the next year, I didn't. Uh, I went solo for the global game jam. And I made a game that was just a dad joke. <laughs> like, basically, just a dad's playing with toy cars. It was Splatoon meeting a bullet, uh, mixed with a bullet hell. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the round, it's basically dads playing against other dads using, like, uh, using the food that their kids didn't eat as paint. <laughs> yeah. That's and then a they make very, it... uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a very solo project idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I but, cannot uh, anyway, imagine getting a team on board with that. Yeah, <laughs> it was like uh, I, I had a. Um, I was making it was all fake. Uh, the kind of, the cars were fake three D at the time. I just had a bunch of fun with that, uh, and I just ended up reusing that bit. And uh, guess what happened with that game? I presented it. People loved the game, and then I uh, the judges looked at me and said, "Okay, how does this fit the theme of waves?" <laughs> I, they told I did me, that global game jam. Yeah, they told me that it, uh, I ca- I tried to come up with something and said, "Oh, it's be- uh, a wave of bullets." That's how I did it. <laughs> and, and then when they said, "No, that's not good enough," I said, "Oh, uh, splat the paint." Uh, that's a bunch of waves. <laughs> I, um, and they said, "Nope, that's not good enough." And I feel like I would have won that. G- I would have won the prize that they were giving at the. Um, at that global game jam location, if I didn't, if I had uh, made it about, if I added something that was actually about waves, I would have got that prize. Yeah, I was yeah. very salty. Yeah, yeah. But it's, <laughs> at, at the same time, it's also like I feel, especially during like game jams, and you have to like brainstorm. Usually, like the getting like a team on board with your idea, it's mostly when it's like, it's just like the ideas kind of, it's like a message, you know, like. Um, you know, where it's like they do um they do a game that's like, oh, we're going to make a game that's just like incredibly, you know, pretty for a game jam. And then everyone is like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, we're, we're going to make something that's just needlessly pretty. Or like um, <laughs> I once did a game jam and uh, the, t- the team was um, a climate. Um, so we made a climbing game called Climate. <laughs> and I love was the on board for the idea just because it was like a dumb joke. <laughs> <laughs> so that also helps. Um, By yeah. the way, I, I loved how you made it work with some uh, switch controller, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the game. Yeah. How's so it We spelled? made like a fake switch presentation as well <laughs> for the. Uh, <laughs> the event it was cool. What what's it? How's it spelled? Is it just climb with eight at the end or something? It's it's climb mate, as in like uh, climb friend. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is it on Twitter? Is it climate at climate? No, that's somebody else. Okay. No. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, here it is. <laughs> it's on my. Um, I just my, found it. Um, itch, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how, how are you? You guys like experience with um, 
Okay, team. team. Like, I've like never well, worked in that. teams. Um, it's like I always did. Well, I did like one when I was like first starting out. I like saw somebody on this forum who was like really good at making three D art, and I was like, "You want to collaborate on a game?" And then like, and they were like, "Sure." And then as soon as we actually started doing stuff, I was like, "Wait, I have to like compromise on what I want to do design wise." <laughs> and like and i was like thinking oh, i have to be nice and like ask them their thoughts on things and like this is annoying i can't just say do this and then i kind of like stopped working on it and like they didn't do any work either and we just stopped talking to each other <laughs> <laughs> it just ended like that and then um so and then that was that was it for my collabs until like a ludum dare the last ludum dare i collabed with a couple people which was fine because it was like nice because i actually knew what they were doing and really good and then right now yeah. i'm also working with a friend who's a sound designer um, who's helping me with my current game but otherwise i've like literally never done team stuff hmm. yeah my, my rule about working with teams and this isn't what i wouldn't do but it sort of is the opposite so you can kind of work out what i wouldn't do uh my rule is that i have to actually know the person before i work oh, with them yeah. Oh, yeah, um, for sure. like yeah. I, I need to have been following them on twitter or like have seen seen some of their work over a longer period of time or chatted to them, preferably if, like, actually talked to them. Mm -hmm. Because I had one really bad experience with, uh, with a voice actor who, like, randomly messaged me on Game Jolt one time, and I was in the middle of making a game for a jam, so I was like, sure, why don't you, like, work with me on this? And he was like, sure. I was, like, very clear it was a game jam, and there were a few other people working on it, and it was, like, an unpaid thing. And then, like, afterwards, he reached out to me asking for money. Oh, no. And I was oh. like, dude, we discussed this. I told you this is explicitly a game jam thing that we're, like, doing for free. And the guy was, like, insistent that I should pay for his gas money or whatever he oh. wanted. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, so af after that point, I was like, yeah, I'm never working, at working with someone who just randomly reaches out to yeah. me ever again. Mm, that's why I, I never accept I feel, volunteer work on my channel sorry go ahead yeah i feel if you do like a game jam if you're lucky enough to be able to do like a game jam on location um mm, yeah I, my my rule is always to like um spend the f most of the first day just like hanging out and like going on like an adventure or something mm -hmm. just because it's like team building and you also get to like share an experience and then you can maybe like make a game about that you know um that's like a good way in my uh, my experience. Oh, I want to do an in-person jam so much. That sounds so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's most, the best I ones did... are the one where you don't make a game at all. <laughs> <laughs> I did an in-person jam a couple of years ago, where, which was sponsored by Rolls-Royce at, at, at another university that was nearby. And I ended up going to it because, oh, I thought, because I thought, oh, okay. This university has the backing of Apple and other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Let me see if I could get me some, uh, let's see what the prizes are. And uh, <laughs> the, and uh, I've never seen someone so cheap before. Be filled with lot, like come in with like wearing a, an expensive looking suit and then tell you the jam theme was about vertical integration or horizontal <laughs> integration. Like there's something to teach. Uh, about how businesses sort of grow whatever, vertically <laughs> horizontally and um, <clears throat> somehow I ended up winning that jam and all they gave me was 25 pounds in Amazon vouchers oh, oh, oh yeah that, that reminds me when um, I, I think um, in our school there was like an extra thing you could do and it was also with like a company and you could like make a game like a VR game with them um and then, like, they basically gave us, like, they were sponsored by, like, the local cinema thing. So they gave us, like, a ticket for one free cinema <laughs> viewing or something. <laughs> and it's like, thank you, but we just made, like, your fucking VR training program for you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, my God. When I was in college, um, there was, they had a hackathon. And they were, they were doing like a lot of like a game category that year. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, it's like 12 hour jam or whatever. I can do that. And so I, I like made a game overnight and it was like pretty mediocre, some like RTS thing in Unity and um, pretty mediocre. But 
I was like, I guess by far the best game developer at the school. Um, and apparently the judges, they got like one person there who worked in the CS department and the rest were like, <clears throat> there was like a journalist alumni. There was like a business alumni. Like it was like people weren't even programmers who were like judging us because it was supposed to be for like real world applications. Anyway, so mm -hmm. I go through, they're like, you know, everyone's demonstrating their stuff. I demonstrate mine. Then they're giving out the awards. They never mention mine. They never mention it at all. And I'm like, oh, oh maybe no. like, <laughs> I was like thinking, because mine was like clearly better than anything else there. And then I was thinking, oh, well, maybe because they talked more about their learning process and their presentations. And I was just kind of like, yeah, I made this. And they're like, what challenges do you face? And I was like, oh, not really. I've done this kind of stuff a lot. It wasn't really a challenge at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, maybe because I didn't talk about like what I learned and stuff. Turns out, like a week or so later, the one judge who was like actually a computer science person, he was one of my professors. He was pretty nice. I liked him. He came up to me afterwards, like when I was in a lab and he was like, oh, I just wanted to mention, I thought your project was really cool. And the only reason it didn't like at least get second or first place in like the overall hackathon out of all the projects including the non-games was because the other judges thought you cheated and made it like in before the hackathon They're, they thought there was oh, no, no way somebody oh, could make that no. in 12 hours no. <laughs> I, I hate that this person is too good for this particular place <laughs> attitude i've seen that a few times uh -huh. and it's like it's yeah, just like good, pe also, people who are good at things can show up anywhere <laughs> Yeah, I feel also if you're like a judge, maybe you should like, not, <laughs> you know, put a, um, accusations of stuff, you know, that's without like any evidence. You yeah. Know? It's just like the point mm. of getting judges in the first place that they kind of maybe try to try their best to stay professional, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was yeah just... Judge the judges. Judge the judges. <laughs> the I was like, for the judges. I was like thinking, if I ever do this jam, this hackathon again, I'm gonna stream the whole thing and like save the bod and like put it up in my like presentation. <laughs> be like, yeah, I have evidence this time because apparently some dumbass judges didn't believe me last time. And that's how Mrs. Is started his YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> I never did another hack. Though. I was just like, this is dumb. I spent 12 hours. I should have gotten that $50 Amazon gift card. Like, you know. <laughs> well, at least you, um, you didn't have to also, uh, you mentioned in the first podcast that uh, you think, well, y your first YouTube video could have been like exposing the judges. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of, you know, attacking non-gaming, uh, no, what was it? YouTube game developers that haven't released a single game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought about making a video on that, though. The hackathon experience. The time I was too good and got banned or something. <laughs> right, I mean, what would the title be? I got kicked out of a hackathon for being too good. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, what was it? A circle uh, on your on your face? Arrow pointing at your head? <laughs> and, you know... Oh, it was a shocked face. Yeah. I got kicked yeah, out of yeah. the jam. <laughs> Red circles everywhere. Maybe like put in sounds a butt really, somewhere. Yeah, it sounds really fun to go back to the hack hackathon though and just make like a game for revenge. That's why I'm <laughs> making something just to prove a point. <laughs> uh, Even better, that yeah. reminds me of this uh, one uh, assignment that uh, that I got in university like in my first year. And uh, we were given an assignment that said, oh, you have to make this. Um, they gave, we got a design brief of a game. And it was just like a, a hell, just a shooting game, just making a high score. And I was so annoyed by it, like an act of rebellion. I basically threw out the whole design brief and made like a, a Luftrausers kind of game. And uh, <laughs> I, full, I, I handed in my assignment I full and I expected the next day to see like the, my professor just looking at me with his arms crossed, <laughs> and but guess what happened instead? He suddenly wanted me to act like some kind of design consultant. What after that? <laughs> yeah, Dang. like oh wow, this this is so fun, and I basically <laughs> and the game was really bad. Like uh, if I look if I go back to it now. I get motion sickness because I thought <laughs> because I couldn't figure out like how to do the orthographic camera zooming in Unity. I ended up making like the zooms a bit too strong or too light, <laughs> so it's easy to get motion sickness. And somehow that made him think, 
huh, this guy is really talented. <laughs> he he's, he I, seems like a person that's really good at design. Let I think he played himself. too much and got brain damage, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, and uh, like a couple of years later, someone found the game after I uh, deleted it off my itch, and they opened up the <laughs> Unity project and they looked at my god awful code, and then copied and pasted it to me. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, they copied and pasted it to wow. you. Wow. <laughs> yes. What a risk. That is uh, prime online weirdo behavior. Oh. Oh no, it was a friend and he just wanted a quick laugh. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, oh, okay. I, I thought I it was like cringed. a random stranger. Hey, I never cringed so hard that, uh, than that day. Like, like he, just, uh, he just sent me a couple snippets and said, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? Okay, sorry if you well, if you have to edit out that swear word. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> but, yeah. We, nah. we swear like, on this what? podcast. Mm-hmm. Salman, what did you study in uni? Uh, I studied a course that was called Computer Games Technology. And it was basically a whole, like, a three-year course that basically encompassed, like, a bunch of comp- uh, uh, computing departments, like, four-year degrees, three-year degrees. Mm-hmm. And, it, like, like uh, one department's work is, like, basically being condensed into, like, three months, uh, not like, four different, like, subjects for, like, a whole semester. And, uh, like, a year's worth of, uh, like, stuff that would take a whole year in other courses we just truncated down to like three months Mm -hmm. and uh it wasn't like a it wasn't a fun experience because uh instead it was supposed to be making games but i only made like a a single game no Mm. actually two games or three games out of that whole three years that i was there Mm. yeah Yeah. same same i mean i went on a game course as well i mean we made quite a few games but it always feels like for a game course you you're not making a lot of games, you know? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I always... Yeah. I, still, I still think, like, the, the New York University, like, Game of the Week course. Yeah, the Game of the yeah. Week course. I want to do that. That seems like the ideal um, oh, yeah. game course. You can tell if someone's, like, going to be, uh, like, fun to work with or, like, going to pull off something interesting when they have, like, at least one game that they released, be mm-hmm. it good or bad. Like, if they have, like, a couple released games, even better. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Usually means that they know, like, a bunch of risks that could happen. Like, it would be a big or small project. Quantity of quality, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I've always had the idea, like, I never knew anyone who studied game design before, before you and Adam. But I always had the idea that studying game design was a waste of time, or, like, in a college. Oh. And they were all a def- scam. Definitely is. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah, but 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 mine wasn't the game design course, and I think that's what made mine so good because um, there is a game design course in Belgium as well, but it's not very good. But it's like we learn everything except game design because like our school is very <laughs> much like you can't teach game design; you just make games. So that mm. was oh, that's, that's cool. Good. Yeah, I like yeah, that attitude. Industry around here is like it's design focused, and every single design like graduate. Is always is always sucks apparently according to every <laughs> uh, bunch of studios over the past like five six oh, years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's up with them. They give like they get given like lots of bad habits. Mm. At least that's the thing that annoys right. them, yeah. and they have to start from the the bottom all over again just to unlearn all of those. Also, like, do uh, studios need habits. so much game designers? It seems yeah. like weird to me. Like, also, yeah, game designers are not in high demand. Yeah. yeah. So I don't and know I... why there's so much game design courses. It's weird. Everyone wants to be the idea person. That's why. Yeah. Hell yeah. Probably. <laughs> so they just make the courses to make money. Probably. Mm. I, I thought about business. enrolling I in like full sale at, for a semester just so I could like make a video exposing that or something. <laughs> 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 Oh, that would be sick, though. That would be amazing. <laughs> I know, it's like, uh, oh. God, it, oh, it I, a... I want this in, like, the games industry, like, um, a complete stakeout operation <laughs> for <laughs> the game school. <laughs> I worked at Blizzard for one year, just so you don't have to, and then I just expose how awful or something, I don't know. Oh, that would be good. 
<laughs> okay, so uh okay, so the question I have is do you guys feel like you have a methodology when it comes to coming up with a game hook? Like what's the like the first steps that you take or don't take? So hmm. so for um, me it is uh I either instantly like say if it's a game jam or whatever and I'm going to make a game I instantly have an idea for the game and I instantly have an idea for the hook or it takes like 10 hours of thinking about it to get anything and then I don't have a hook and it's just like a game that is interesting but it's not like going to hook you uh, um uh, so I have no methodology I just either have a hook or I don't uh but what kind of hook a mechanical hook or a theme hook or uh, what kind it, of thing it, it can be most... anything like usually usually I think I go with like a an artistic hook like a graphics hook <laughs> Which isn't the best hook in some regards, but it's it's good for first impressions. Hmm. What about Adam? Because uh, he always has like some crazy. One day he could be working on something that seems eighties themed, and the next it's PlayStation <laughs> PSX. It's um, um, interesting. I I usually have like a, it's more like conceptual for me, um, like you know. Uh, a game where you play in like an abandoned server, you know, stuff like that. Um, but um, it usually starts with me like um, like uh, going to someone and like explaining my ideas to them, and then they're like, "That sucks. I don't think that could work as a game." And then I'm like, "I'll prove you wrong," and then I make <laughs> the game. <laughs> so that's like my my process. <laughs> what about you? Uh... <laughs> I am very mechanically focused. Like everything, when I'm coming up with a game, it's always mechanic first. I always try to think of like one, like simple, easy to make mechanic that's easy to replicate or like make a bunch of content for. Like, I don't know. I just think of, well, if it's a game jam, I think of the theme and I think of like what, like, I usually will like be a thesaurus and think of synonyms for like whatever the theme is and maybe puns and stuff. Like, there was this awful theme for one Ludum Dare called Entire Game on One Screen. And I was like, <laughs> I hate when they do that kind of stuff. And, um, mm. and I was like, it kind of sounds like um, an entire game onion screen. Or I was, I don't know, it was like some weird way you could like <laughs> pun it. But I didn't turn that in. So I wish I had done that instead. Um, instead of just making a game where the game was on one screen. But uh, yeah, it's always mechanic focused. And I just think of like, I have like a really good sense of what feels fun before I make it. Like I can almost, I can almost play it in my head first. And like, I just, it's like this idea and I think of how it would feel and it's like, okay, I think that would be fun. And then I make it and it, and it always feels the same when I play it in real life as it does in my head. Almost always, at least. Um, sometimes, yeah, it can vary, but yeah, that's what I, that's like my process. I always think mechanics first. The only game I haven't really done that was my current one, Rot Flesh, where it's like I just had the idea for the inventory system, and I had no idea what I wanted to do for the base game. And I was like, "Oh great, how do I? How do you make a game around an inventory system?" And yeah, yeah, you ended up coming up with like stuffing your organs in and out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the base, and I was like. Okay, well, what goes around that? Like, what's like the reg? Because you can't just make the whole game that, or could you? I don't know. Maybe you could. But yeah, uh, that's yeah. That game was also, by the way, the top-down version of it. That's how I first found out about you. Like, I think I saw a trailer of that game, oh. like early on, what? on YouTube. And, yeah. <laughs> Dang, I didn't even know people watched that. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. The early devlogs and videos have like barely any views right now. Oh. Well, um, yeah, I, de I definitely like only watched the four developers one art kit for the first while I watched Miz. Yeah. I feel like that's been every game developer's intro to me. Interesting. Oh, um, uh, similar to you as well. I'm, I also um, am more mechanics focused, but I've been trying to move away from that uh mm -hmm. but um i noticed like the like i, I used to have a I, 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 I when i had to write a present a talk for the game developers of conference uh, a while back i tried to figure out what the, was it the method to that madness 
instead of like I, I before i would have mentioned oh i would look at random art through pinterest that i saved or something mm-hmm. but um i ended up finding like um like when it comes to like figuring out like a project like what's the hook i have like four things that i try and it was genre fusion so basically imagine like uh mixing uh metal gear solid with i don't know cooking mama <laughs> <laughs> like what what idea what could you come up yeah. with uh, you could come up with a little, some weird games or maybe a snake uh a game of snake plus racing hmm. no yeah uh, or maybe i don't know beat saber uh meets metal gear solid or cookie clicker mm-hmm. like what could you get from that uh okay mm. so so it's a genre fusions uh and the second one was learning driven so basically trying to I uh, like if I'm trying to figure out oh how should how would I be able to do like l- today I'm going to mess around with physics joints what random uh, idea yeah. could come up from that oh hmm. maybe a, a game about your hands being used as a grapple hook uh punching stuff okay yeah uh what was it or maybe I don't know tic tac toe uh <laughs> but meets nuclear throne huh. <laughs> yeah a lot, a lot of my ideas, I think, are actually learning focused. They're like, I want to learn how to do this thing, so I'll make a game about it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and um, and then the next two are like um, theme, which I learned from like looking at um, Adam's work. Like uh, he always seems to explore like um, like for example, no players online, basically just being an empty server. Mm. Like that, yeah, that like you could do a lot with that theme, or mm. maybe like dogs in space. <laughs> trying to get uh like trying to ca- get a treasure that's mm-hmm. basically the theme uh, that's the theme that I ended up going with for my game bb blaster by the way. <laughs> and uh then or uh, maybe a game with uh where you have a gun and no bullets or yeah. you're a golf or a golf ball with a gun <laughs> mm. yeah that's and good. then yeah and then uh, the last one was minimal input which I basically learned from doing like working on hyper casual games. Like, what mm. could you pull off with like a single tap, or is it holding a tap or like dragging and all that stuff? Mm. Or even yeah. if it's like uh, VR, maybe what could you do with just like grabbing, throwing, you know, just yeah. trying to make it as minimal as possible. That's cool. Like, um, yeah, at I... least uh, that's also another hook that I had with my game BB Blaster, since it's uh, basically an arena shooter. That you control it like a single tap, like uh, the whole thing. Uh huh. Wow, that's cool. Mm. Um, I feel like when you go, I guess, more mechanic focused and stuff, or just when you have different approaches to genres that don't expect those approaches or something, you can um, come up with way more interesting things. Like, like if you're doing a story or a theme focus and you're like, let's make a mechanically focused game, but let's start with like a theme focus or let's make an atmosphere focus game, like a horror game. But we start with a mechanic focus. Like we come up with a mechanic hook first. I, don't, I haven't played your uh, sealed estate. I want to play it now. Um, but I don't know. Did you have a mechanics focus with that when you jumped in or when you designed uh, it? It was originally just learning driven. I just wanted to figure out how, if I could make like cool looking shadows, mm. like top down view. And uh, I ended up coming up with like a, a flash. I ended up making like a little flashlight just uh, and um, ended up like uh, coming up to like, oh, what happens if you shine a light on something? Mm-hmm. And uh, the game kind of evolved from there. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't touch it for like nine months. <laughs> yeah. And then I had to come up with a story. Uh, and that changed like every two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Relatable. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's in, it's interesting though because I feel when I I feel like I used to be very like mechanic focused, but um it became like less gratifying, you know. Oh yeah. Um, mm-hmm. like after a while, it's like just mechanics, and then you don't know what you're like making, you know. Um, mm-hmm. but I feel like now when I'm when I do make games that are pretty like mechanics focused, I I want to leave like as much of the figuring out of the mechanics to when I'm actually making the game, and just stick it to the concept before you know that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah yeah by the way i've been working on bb blaster like two years on and mostly off 
and that mm. was probably <laughs> and that game originally started as like a mechanics driven like hook and it became mm. like so hard to move like to figure out what kind of challenges to make what kind of thieving to have like it made like every other process even harder than it should be like yeah. uh, coming up with a menu coming up with like a theme that fits and yeah, when i sure. came yeah and then when i came to like a like one day i uh, like messaged like uh, one of the dev- one of the developers at nitro and mm-hmm. uh, like all i Which did one? was for, uh john i think oh john i bas- yeah. yeah i basically asked him for like uh, advice on how i could make my game like more interesting like the initial like plan was like asking him oh how would be an easier way to get featured somehow on ios and uh, the first thing uh, he told me was oh animals <laughs> maybe try going with stuff they like to uh, feature something that's uh, theming around animals sometimes and that ended up like making my imagination explode like mm-hmm. uh, suddenly suddenly i i was able to suddenly i had uh, like game had a character to it personality mm-hmm. just because i added like a, i made like a mm. uh what was it? a dog with an eye patch <laughs> uh or um what was it uh, that basically had a bio that said oh it likes to feast on bones of its enemies <laughs> and it like it just looks like very cute with its tongue out like mm. smiling and and um and I, I, I couldn't be more thankful for it honestly mm. but there yeah, so. basically what i'm saying is there's a limit to uh being mm-hmm. wholly mechanics focused it can mm-hmm. uh, stop you in some points uh, later on in development mm-hmm. yeah. for sure and it's it's funny because yeah, I, I used to hate people that uh, said that <laughs> 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 i think i uh found out at the hard way when i made my first uh 2d platformer um which had like no theming and was all just like about mechanics and the mechanics weren't particularly well programmed because i'd been making games like two years at that point but uh yeah it was like um it was like this thing i was like oh yeah i'm gonna make my first commercial game and it's gonna be this platformer where you play as a square walking through levels made out of squares (laughs) and all of the enemies are squares (laughs) and uh suddenly i realized like nobody wants to play that Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to play a game that doesn't have some sort of like visual or thematic appeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's also I don't I don't want people listening to this to feel shameful about <laughs> making um, mechanic driven games because I feel like it's probably like a process oh, yeah. that everyone goes through yeah. maybe. Um, like, but I I I think. Or sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's like, kind of like when you when you draw, you know, like you need to. Once you're like at a level that you're comfortable with drawing, then you can like think about making like comics and like a story. You know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like maybe, maybe yeah. it's something to do with that as well. I think there's a few simple things you can do to like make mechanics-driven games a little bit more interesting. And mm. uh, obviously, the main one of them is like juice, and then the <laughs> second one is having like some interesting art, having a face on it as well. Is also good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think the first time I realized mechanics only, though, gets boring after a bit if you make the game too long, um, was before I was even a game developer. I played a Nitrum game, actually, that had no story. It was just it was just a puzzle game. It was like where you fold the world in half or something. You like draw a line in it like... I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I played it a long time ago. And I just remember, I played through the whole thing, but I just remember it kind of got boring and samey, even though it had unique puzzles on every level. And I was just like, huh, what? I don't know. I don't think I realized it at the time, but looking back, I was like, oh, it's because all the other Nitro games I had played had like these really cool stories and stuff going on. But this one was just, just the game. So it didn't, I don't know, after, like after the first five, ten minutes of playing through the puzzle, it kind of lost its interest and i needed like a goal or something of like yeah overarching story goal oh i think i kind of realized that with the wolfenstein games one of the recent ones like the first like um the first wolfenstein game that was uh, published by bethesda uh wolfenstein the new order and um like i i love that game like i beat it from like start to finish and uh, when i played the dlc for it which basically like a whole another campaign of itself i was completely bored out of my mind 
like because they didn't like the like there was a less story content like there was less like narrative mm. full on narrative going on mm. in the game in the DLC that I didn't I didn't have like enough to push me through and that made me like realize oh this oh wow this uh yeah I, I can't be pushed uh, to keep playing a game if it's just yeah. purely just mechanics like I, yeah. I still I, I played like the new Doom games uh, uh at least yeah the f- Doom 2016 I haven't completed that game. I think I went only like three hours in and I quit. Hmm. I was able to stick with that, Doom. I I played through it in one sitting. And I think having the story elements helped with that. There was a lot. I mean, there was a lot of really cool. I like the music, the way it integrated with the gameplay. But just having like set little goals to reach, I think, helped Mm. a lot. Like, I think the old style of how the original Doom worked, I wouldn't be able to play through today. Um, just like not having any kind of like goal or I don't know, yeah, beats to like meet story beats or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, um, uh, I think this this was a useful advice that I uh, heard about when it comes to making uh, narratives, like interesting narratives. Uh, someone told me that could possibly work for like uh, with games was like having a bunch of small, uh, having like one long term goal, but having a bunch of like short-term goals towards that long-term goal Mm -hmm. like oh yeah like the yeah for example like oh the long the long-term goal is oh save the dragon uh like save the princess from a dragon okay how do i get there it's more interesting Uh, like not not, like for example like the first short-term girl is all goal first uh, first short-term goal could be like oh yeah the hero has to be a drug addiction uh okay (laughs) Uh, the second uh, what was it goal is oh try to call the dragon and try to negotiate something with it, <laughs> and then the second like uh, what was it uh, the second goal could be the next goal could be oh okay uh, come up with a game plan with the dragon on how to fake uh, like saving the princess and getting like uh, awarded for it, and then like the next uh, next is like oh you send the the hero suddenly got uh, bamboozled by the dragon the dragon <laughs> wants to come out as the hero of the story uh yeah basically that. <laughs> that's interesting like, um yeah. cuz i've been playing with uh ai dungeon recently do you, do you guys mm-hmm. know what that is it's yeah. a yeah, it's I, like I a played it. a text based adventure game where all of the like all of the computer computer side of things is generated by uh, GPT-3 mm-hmm. AI. Mm-hmm. So it's all just like randomly pulled out of nowhere. And anything that you get done in that, it has to be short-term goals. And there's no overarching goal you can really like aim for. Mm-hmm. Because if you do, it'll end up like, no matter what, no matter how big a goal it is, you can find a way to do it in like five different like text prompts, basically. Yeah, too. It's always like the end goal is like, um, get a book from the dungeon and then just type I get a book from the dungeon and then say <laughs> you win <laughs> <laughs> was it called AI adventure you said or AI, AI, AI dungeon? dungeon okay yeah I, oh, yeah, I remember the what was the developer saying it cost, uh, cost them like ten thousand dollars a day or a month because of how yeah. hard people are hitting it yeah but it's um it's it's an interesting topic I think and I think it mostly has to do with like pacing in games because like um like, uh, pacing a story in a game is really difficult I feel because the part where you can put the most game is in the part where there's like no story happening like you know if you compare it to like Half-Life or something it's like the story is happening in between like all the sections where you're actually walking around and shooting people and stuff you yeah know? but that's like you, you the don't... whole game is walking around and shooting people but that's like with the least story you know in in a book, you don't get an exact description of all of the enemies, uh, yeah. hero fights on their journey. You know. Yeah, exactly. And I, I wonder if it's like even possible to pace a video game the way you would like a movie or a book. Wait, oh, imagine like, a book. Story imagine games. a book with random encounters, though. <laughs> <laughs> every, it's like every suddenly now a and... page appears. <laughs> oh. What if it's like Wait. every now and then it uh, it asks you to roll a dice and if it's like this <laughs> number you have to go to a page where there's a random encounter. <laughs> I think that's basically a choose your own adventure. If it's like randomized. <laughs> <laughs>
I've been doing uh, D and D uh, lately, and I found planning out encounters for that helps with planning out encounters for games because it always like it's good practice for coming up with interesting little hooks and also reasons for why the players should want to go there. And I found it helps me think about like the player psychology because I can't just unlike a video game, I can't just be like this is your only option. It's like in the game players or in D and D players can be like. Well, you know, uh, let's just not do that. Let's go somewhere else. I want to, let's explore this area. And it's like, I haven't prepared anything for there. <laughs> so you got to like really think of ways to like get them to do certain things without like making them feel like they're forced into it, you know? Yeah. It's, the yeah, homie yeah. option. <laughs> huh? The yeah, homie yeah. option. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, we should probably go on to the next question now. Yeah. Um, yeah, too. I think that's Adam's. Okay. Um, yeah, so, okay, my question, um, so, do you find that to be, like, a difference between, um, what you think you should be making and, like, what you actually want to make? Um, and the reason I ask that is because I'm constantly, like, there's, like, stuff that I feel like I should be making, but then, like, secretly, I also want to make them, but then instinctively, yeah. I want to make something else, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Hmm. Um I feel like I went through it like way too much like uh having like like I think uh I tried to beat this habit but uh, um you know um stuffed wombat. Mm. Like uh like over the co past couple of years he'd like uh he would find he would always point out like he would try to shout at me like say no 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 if I seen like one day I'd be <laughs> posting like a, a gif of uh, something uh, uh that I wanted to prototype out and then the next day, I dropped the project and prototyped something else that I found <laughs> even more interesting. And um, he noticed that that I just kept doing like I was in a cycle of doing that again and again. That he ended like like every few times he tried to catch me and say, "No, no, 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 watch out, don't stop." <laughs> like, like, what are you doing? And then uh, just so I don't have to explain myself, uh, I tried to avoid like trying to do that like, <laughs> project hopping. And I think that's kind of helped me like be more focused but uh it... <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't yeah know I'm gonna keep going with that but yeah it's like how i started working out one of my friends invited me to work out with him and i hated doing it but i was too polite to say no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now you're a weightlifter oh. oh yeah i am uh... Being forced Plus to explain misses. yourself really stops you from <laughs> continuing on with something. <laughs> uh, so for me, I find that like this was something that really popped up to me when I made my first horror game. And I was like, I'd wanted to make the horror game and I'd made the horror game. But up until that point, I'd been making kind of like artsy first person walking simulators for most of my games or like things that tried to have like a bunch of meaning. But really, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> And so it felt like I was, like, betraying this, uh, like, artistic side of things to just make something scary. Yeah. Um, and, like, I actually remember saying at the time it, like, felt weird making a horror game because horror games are, like, the easy way out because they get way more views, which mm -hmm. is definitely true. And that's not a bad thing. And I wanted to make the game, so I don't know why I was fretting about it so mm -hmm. much. But uh, nowadays, I find... I do I do feel like I should be working on something else, like some something different, but that's only when I'm in the middle of working on something that I felt like I should be working on three week three months ago. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's definitely the like uh I think someone was saying about their their dream project being their next project always earlier. Yeah, yeah. I think that was Miz maybe. Yeah. And that is I think the same feeling where it's like, I wish I was making uh like a silly physics based game right now <laughs> when I'm actually making this uh, kind of gritty horror game. Mm. That's that's my current situation. Um, but I've actually, like, this this year I'm trying to prototype a different game each month. So that's actually, like, in the books for me. Next month I'm working on this <laughs> silly physics game. So it's fine. Yeah. That's really interesting that you say that because that's, like, almost exactly the dilemma I'm going through now. <laughs> Where I'm, like, <laughs> I want to do more, like... Um, but it's, it's, I think it's a bit different because I, I think I do want to make more like artsy stuff and I feel like I should, that's like stuff I, that I feel like I should be making. Um, but uh, I, 
I feel like I can use like Ho as a medium for that. But instead of instead yeah. of like um being like Idaho or Etsy, it's more like um I wanna I, I wanna do artist stuff and I feel like I should do it, but I'm also like what if I just made a game where you click the button and thing explode and it's like shoot shoot and it just you know, it's it's a game that's like <laughs> very gamey, you know? <laughs> But it's mm-hmm. like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want like a game that's like not about anything. <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. It's weird, you know? I just want to make something that's like dumb fun. But also I feel like I really, really should not do that. Like, <laughs> it's it's really weird. Um, for me right now, it's... I The game I should be making is Rock Flesh because it gets the most views. And it's a big game. It's going to take a long time. And I know when I release it, it's going to make a bunch of money. So I'm like, I should make this, but then I have like this list of like small games that it would take like a week each to make. And I'm just like, oh, I really want to make that. I really want to make that. And it's like, but I know they're not going to do as well in terms of views and like Mm. people playing them. So it's like, Mm. I just kind of want to do them for fun and like try out different things, but like, and also experience that satisfaction of actually finishing something. Cause when you work on a big project, you don't get that feeling like practically ever. Um, (laughs) So it's like, yeah, I want that, I want that like feeling of like, I made something and it's done and you can play it and stuff. So that's, yeah, that's kind of the struggle for me right now. So I guess it's, I can justify it if it's like for a video or small project. Like I just started planning another four devs video and it's like, okay, I'm going to make a small game for that. And I had a prototype idea I've been wanting to do and I can do it for that. So it's like, that'll, that'll get views and that'll you know, bring in sales so I can justify it. Um, yeah, that's kind of my thing right now, but I'm, I'm very much like, I never work on something unless I know I'm going to finish it and I know I can make it. And mm. I'm just like, that was like the first thing I really focused on when I was doing game dev. Cause I just saw all the people on the forums on the unity forums who had never, um, finished anything constantly jump projects. And I was like, I don't want to be like that. Yeah. And like, yeah. Just, I'm just like yeah. Don't be like me. don't be <laughs> yeah. like me. I mean, yeah. I, I beat myself up for jumping projects all the time, but like I did release more games last year than I actually intended to, so oh, I don't yeah. think I'm in a bad position. <laughs> mm-hmm. I figure as long as you actually release stuff, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's true. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. But, yep. People see two cakes rather than one big cake. Yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of have the same rule. But um, I think so far I've I've never um, like done two projects at the same time, but maybe that's just because I'm lazy, <laughs> or then just by restraint. <laughs> um, but um, have any of you done like big year long projects? I've never I've I've never done a project that's taken more than a month. Um, oh wow! Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm afraid to take any project that takes more than a month to finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah, but I'm going to do a project soon that's going to take longer than a month, and I'm very scared. But um, yeah, yeah, can't say much. It is cool, it. but uh, yeah, it is an exciting feeling when you like work on something big because it's like this will be big, and it's my first, and it's like gonna actually be big, and mm. um, I don't know. There's more you can do and stuff. Yeah, for sure. With uh, my game Intersection, that was my first big game. It took like a year and a half like on and off work Mm -hmm. and that was like um i had been making games let's see i started in 2014 i think end of 2014 yeah i had made a bunch of small games and i was just like okay i've done a bunch of small games i'm ready for something big what's what am i going to work on and i looked through all my prototypes and i was like okay this one's the most interesting and unique so let's turn it into a big game and then i just I had like no deadlines or goals or plans or anything, but, um, when it finally finished, I was just, I think the last week I did like 16 hours of work a day. Cause I was like about to go traveling mm. for the summer and I just wanted oh, to wow. finish it before I left cause I had a potential publisher. Um, and yes, yeah, so I did. I worked insanely hard the last, no, it was like two weeks. I think I like taught myself SQL so I could make a level editor, um, and have people wow. upload levels. I made the whole level editor in one week, taught myself SQL in a day in PHP. It's probably awful and full of security flaws, but whatever. <laughs> it was. Um, but yeah, that was like <laughs> my like experience with big projects was like insane crunch and stress followed by like, like a week of just like, 
or weeks of just like not really working on it more than like an hour or two here or there over like a course of a week mm. and it's just yeah it's uh, it's a lot <laughs> right now i think i'm doing a lot better because i have like set deadline or set goals for because i have to make a video about what i'm working on so i like set up like a specific yeah. goal like here's what i want to make this stuff and then i make that and it's like okay accomplish that next goal is here and then that like gives me like a very clear roadmap to like the finishing of the project like i think right now i'm like i think i'm like four videos away from like being done almost that's good of course those are gonna be like yeah anyways I've, how did i get on that topic? <laughs> what were we talking by about? the way i want <laughs> since <clears throat> i have one small question um, since we've all basically worked on a game that's either gory or horror themed, and um, and what I what I wanted to ask was, um, did you guys end up developing like a small fear or something while from all of that? Because hmm. I definitely did. Because uh, I got I had like a small fear of being asked for sugar or <laughs> someone knocking on the door for a few <laughs> days after I made my uh, 10MG sealed estate game. That's um, huh. well, yeah, and I know that like uh, there was a Gamma Sutra article like years back about uh, Halo developers uh, like having nightmares because they had to draw out the guts in like uh, like the uh, like the third section, third act of the game, like where you're inside guts and stuff, kind of mm. environments. And, oh yeah, and, it's actually uh, been like the opposite for that... me. I've I've gotten over a fear. Um, because I've, um, yeah. I used to be really, really scared of hopping into Gary's mod, um, in a map, um, without, uh, like, waiting for a friend and, like, walking around. So that was, like, the, my biggest fear, mm -hmm. I think, maybe, ever. But then, I feel like, I after that, yeah. playing, like, No Players Align, I kind of got over it a bit, little bit, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's been, like, therapy for That's me. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think most of the horror games I've made are like kind of scary games I've made are things that I'm actually already mm -hmm. scared of. So like uh I made Perennial which was about being like uh being paranoid that some something's behind you in the middle of the night and looking back and there's nothing there and still being just scared behind me just uh, <laughs> And then uh then I made like I made like uh I made um Bleak Shore, which I made last year, was a game where I tried to make, like, the fear and anxiety of, like, being scared that someone suddenly hates you for some reason. I tried to make that into a game. Mm. And I, I don't know if I got over that fear with that project, but it certainly made me understand the, like, the way that impacts you mm -hmm. a bit better. Yeah, for sure. I do believe that, like, with making games, you can kind of process some thoughts. I don't know. I, I made a game about walking mm. into the ocean. Um, I'm still not sure if I've gotten over my fear of depths, but uh, I haven't walked in the ocean since. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, I I feel like things that would have grossed me out before now I like laugh at. It. I'm like, oh, that would be a really good thing to put in my game. <laughs> <laughs> It just like kind of accidentally became gross because I noticed that's what got reactions out of people and made them like more interested in the yeah. game. Yeah, and so there, it just there's like... been like a moment or two watching your devlogs, Miz, that I've just been like, ew, <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. And so I'm just like, oh, how can I make this more gross and weird? Like, how can I freak out people more? <laughs> like, I saw this. Did I? I forget if I mentioned this. I saw this interview with the what was that game Snake Pass for the Switch where you control the snake. Yeah, yeah, there was an interview with the devs where they were like, they know they originally made it like really realistic and stuff, where you're controlling like a realistic snake. Right. And they found when they're playtesting, people found it too creepy and weird, so they were like, "Oh, we should make it, you know, as cute as possible, so people won't get <laughs> freaked out." And my reaction was like, I would have gone the complete opposite direction. Be like, let's make it more creepy. <laughs> make, it, make it so you're playing as a living intestine. <laughs> I would have, like, amplified the snake fear. Like, oh, people are afraid of making snakes. Let's make it look even creepier and, like, focus on that even more. And, like... Now, now it's a stealth game where you're a snake and you have to take out people. Yeah. Kill mice. Kill people. And all of the people you take out are playing Snake Pass on her computer. <laughs> <laughs> and Medusa's chasing you, trying to get her hair back. <laughs> I can definitely relate with, like, that change of perspective. Like, I've been watching a lot more movies recently and also like horror stuff and I, I used to be really scared of horror films but like now sometimes 
um, mm. something like really scary happens in a movie, and I'm just like, I'm more, I'm, I'm more like, oh, I can't believe they actually did this. That's so funny, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How did they do that? Yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I have a hard time watching horror movies because I'm like, I see what they're doing with this, but also that's yeah, kind of funny. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's almost like, um, <laughs> and like with stuff like The Human Centipede, it's so ridiculous that it's like, you know, it just like, it comes ridiculous, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That I, was I find like... myself laughing more in horror than I do screaming. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of something interesting that happened uh, for me back in college. There was like a whole like a gym was taken over to like uh, to show a screening of mm. The Exorcist uh, one day, and uh, the stories that I heard from people was it turned from a horror movie <laughs> to a comedy <laughs> because of how many people were funny, laughing. To be honest, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, imagine uh, I, I I haven't watched it, but uh, I wish I I wish I did. What well, I'm just wait. I don't watch movies much anyway because I can't. Get my, I always feel like I'm not doing something if I no, just sit still and not. I feel that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but okay, let's forget that. But uh, the funny thing to me was just imagining like a little girl just raised, uh, what was it, lifting up from the bed and just swearing, like you calling everyone a whore or saying, exactly what, what uh, saying the F word for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I find that uh, it sounds so ridiculous, but the ridiculousness is what makes it like even like uh, more mm. memorable like i think there's a scene from shrek where i think shrek 2 where they like a bunch of like knights grab hold of shrek and donkey <laughs> and instead and instead of like they try and they, there's no pepper spray but they <laughs> literally just get like a, a pepper grinder and then like do it in their eyes spray uh, pepper and i find the absurdity just makes it like more memorable <laughs> even better like um like the Yakuza games, like you're a gangster, <laughs> and somehow the next like ten minutes later you're you're singing, uh, was it, in a karaoke, <laughs> or somehow you're watching a television, yeah. uh, or was it, or you could be was... just walking around randomly, and then some guy in diapers walks by you somehow. I was playing Yakuza Zero earlier actually, and I just like fished for twenty minutes. <laughs> And this, like, serious Yakuza guy just, like, picks up a random fishing rod off the side of this canal, and he, like, starts fishing there. And then I fished up, like, a, a handbag with, like, a gold plate inside. <laughs> it was great. It was good, but this, they sound good. Um, but can we tell you? Yeah. It's a, it's a I highly recommend them. Dummy, dummy. Dummy, oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it's also then again like sometimes you do watch your whole movie and it's like genuinely scary, and then like it really, you know, when it does actually scare you, once you're kind of like getting gotten used to it, it's like oh, it's so much more scary, you know, because it's like that, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you know, you almost don't believe it that it's not funny, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, the the horror the horror that actually scares me like really scares me, but there's not much of it I think, and more of it is like kind of funny or kind mm-hmm. of silly. Yeah, exactly. I think wait, uh, well, from how you guys explained like how it doesn't affect you guys, I think the reason why I got affected uh, by the horror stuff was because um <laughs> I didn't know I had any fears. Like basically, I did so right. much research that I ended up developing like uh, fears that I didn't have before <laughs> or even have to think about. Like, the, <laughs> yeah, and now just ha- but having uh, like gone through like r slash no sleep, Ooh. going through like some <laughs> oh. other stuff. That's really uh, not a good idea. I, honestly, yeah. still to me, like no horror movie or horror game can ever get to the level of stupid internet creepy pastas. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Like. Genuinely, some of the stories I've read on, on like, No Sleep or whatever have been more terrifying to me or mm. stuck with me longer than any horror game or movie I've watched. Yeah, I definitely. Think it's cause of, I think it's because they leave so much to uh, for you to think about. Like, they, they leave the mystery for you to figure out most of the time. And mm. you end up scaring yourself more with, by mm. having a more active imagination. And also, I think it's because they pretend it's real and you kind of start to believe it <laughs> when you read it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't really pretend that what happens in a horror game is real. Yeah. And, like, mm-hmm. 
unless it's maybe fan footage, you can't do that for a horror movie either. Yeah, that degree of separation helps, like, not get... You, like mm. you know that it's fake yeah. you have to read it out in your head and then have to imagine and picture it like if you if you saw like a, a picture like a, a character just staring at you through a window uh, with a smile you'd think oh that that's weird but if you read it out loud read it like a bunch of text that says uh, as he looked behind <laughs> as they looked behind themselves they saw <laughs> uh, a, a shadowy figure with uh and it slowly had its teeth showing up in a smile in so, uh, outside of a window or uh, it, 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 picturing it yourself and you end up making it you know more horrifying mm. in your head so have you guys tried vr hall no i need to get a vr headset no. still God, i got I... a quest uh, a while back oh, so nice. the, fir- the, f- the first try- time i tried it um I saw someone else do it first, like a friend, and he was like really scared. I was like, there's no way this is scary. And I put it on for one second, just in like the menu, and it was so scary. <laughs> it was, I had to take it off like instantly. <laughs> yeah, I, I must I must get a, like a VR horror game, because I barely ever, I got a VR headset with the like pipe dream of making VR games or whatever, mm. and I haven't used it that much. Hmm. Other, other than I played like 50 hours of No Man's Sky and VR okay. which was amazing that's my goal for my next game is going to be VR I, I want to make a VR game so bad but first I have to make a 3D game yeah. then get an actual computer that can run VR somehow and then make a VR game <laughs> yeah. I, I want to yeah. yeah, I want to do like multiplayer first before I want to do VR but I'm never going to do multiplayer so I'll never do VR <laughs> I want to do VR multiplayer, so I'm like, I need to get rich so I can hire somebody to do the multiplayer. <laughs> so I don't have to do it. Oh, I had I had to make a multiplayer game a, a while back, and uh, that was the worst experience of my life. Think that and it wasn't even online multiplayer; oh. it was just local. Dang. And I and it made me not want. I made it was a game where you're like balls that throw balls, basically. Like your balls with legs, if you stamp, if you stomp on the head of other balls, they turn into balls that you can throw around, and like a bunch of mini games. Like oh, mm, you throw, you have to throw a character through like a hoop. That sounds or fun. Get a bomb or something, and uh, the game was called Air Ballers, and I I think my mental health deteriorated while working on that game because <laughs> uh, there's so much extra stuff that I was still kind of brand new to game development, so I made a bunch of mistakes. That hurt me. <laughs> a bunch of duplicate code. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. But yeah, I want to make away. like um, like a plugin <laughs> or something, just that um, so you can make any like walking simulator game multiplayer. I think that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Yeah, so I can play add it to your character controller. Um, <laughs> these things. <laughs> <laughs> Press the add multiplayer button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just press it a few times in the work. Yeah, you really have to. You really have to like mash that add multiplayer button sometimes. Mm, it gets stuck sometimes. Yeah. But you know, it still only takes ten minutes. <laughs> One line of code, guys. I heard Unreal is actually like really good for multiplayer. Like you can just click synchronize on like different variables or something. Yeah, but and then like... you have to Thanks. use Unreal. And... Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> that's a bigger <laughs> sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 start uh, engine wars or Miz will get all uh, high and mighty about Gato on us. <laughs> oh god! It's, <laughs> it's free. That... <laughs> it's open source. You don't have to make oh. an account. You don't have to sign in. You don't have to download three gigabytes of engine. But, it's but fifty what megabytes. If I want Unity to track my every movement. You know. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. if you want to scroll through five pages of licensing documents and clicking accept yeah, without reading any exactly. of them? I mean, imagine working on an engine that anybody can just like use. You know, God, that would that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, recently, I made a joke post like uh, where I had like uh, the debug, like the um, the little window that shows up when it's doing something, and I edited it to make it look like uh, someone from Unity was trying to speak through those error logs. <laughs> <laughs> and for some, and but the th- the in- but the funny thing is. Um, that that was a the idea basically came from seeing like a few years ago where someone complained 
like someone at Unity said, "Oh, the, your game is making more than a hundred thousand. You shouldn't be using this license." Like through email. What? Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, they track and, your error. Tra- what? And I think they, they said they contacted them through email, and uh, it it was like it was very weird experience, and uh, I think it opened up people to think like maybe Unity is looking <laughs> way more than they should. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I I went I I tried to capitalize on that fear like two years later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, For a like, post. <laughs> Unity has like analytics enabled by default, and I never disable it for my games because I just like don't think about that it's like in there but mm-hmm. um because technically speaking like every game I release is you're getting tracked as you play it so so <laughs> everyone I don't I'm, I'm sorry I just <laughs> I don't disable it <laughs> all right well uh that was fun let's see thanks for coming on someone do you want to promote anything um well I wish I had any more links but uh, follow me at on twitter uh, at uh, Salman underscore S H H, and also look out. I might make a YouTube video and I'll a devlog, and I might oh cool uh, post it Ooh. first on Twitter. Uh, the link there if I, once I do. Hmm. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and by a uh, sealed state. Wait, what was it called again? Oh, by uh, ten mg on itch.io. Yeah. Uh, search ten mg on Steam. Buy it twice on Itch and on Steam. Thank you. And then buy it for all of your family members as well. Yeah. Yes. On both platforms. Also, <laughs> do higher than the minimum, please. <laughs> oh. Or, or just um, give us just money, just cash. Yes. Just send yeah, it yeah. yeah, just, just like yes. random, <laughs> randomly make money appear in front of all of us. Yeah, that yes. would be nice. Thank you. Uh, Miz, can you uh, bleep the next part out? Sure. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh damn, that's pretty cool. All right. All right then. Uh, this cool. was fun. Great yeah. conversations. Lots of side tracking. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, that was fine. great. It was fun. We got a lot of cool discussion. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, see you next time. Bye.